Hi, it's Martin. How are you? I hope that uh, you're okay. Here's one of the new members of the governing body with his wife smiling and looking happy. The photograph taken to make it look like everything's normal, everything's okay within this organisation. But is it? It's meant to be a Christian organisation that cares and helps people. That's what it claims on the Charity Commission page. But really we can see that this is not the truth. There are people who have come out, thousands of people, and their lives have been screwed up, affected by the watchtower. Many Jehovah's Witnesses think that it's sin and wickedness and things that they've done wrong and men who act like the Pharisees in the Old Testament times judge them. But do they really see the effects of individual people's lives of different circumstances of why people come out of this organisation and how their lives are affected after they come out when everything from this picture from the governing body seems as if it's Good, happy, happy. Let's look at some experiences and see whether that is the truth. Despite Teresa's complaints, the man remained in the congregation and even gave Bible readings and talks from the stage. It would make me so angry. It would, it would make, make me so angry, angry to the point that I would get up and I'd go outside and I'd just pace. And I'd just pace and I'd just be going around and around and around and just that anger because all I wanted to do was run in there and scream at them that he shouldn't be allowed up there. Why is he allowed up there? Um, my room was completely dark. After 30 years of suffering the consequences, Amy is now suing the local Jehovah's Witness congregation and the Australian head office. I feel like what happened had a bit of a domino effect on the rest of my life. Um, with things that happened to me after. So, yeah, you know, I just I wonder sometimes what my life would have been like if that hadn't have happened. Um, would my self confidence? My self-worth? After two years of legal wrangling, Amy Whitby's case is now headed to trial. It would be the first time in Australia that the Jehovah's Witness organisation has defended sexual abuse allegations in court. The courts in overseas jurisdictions have found that they have been found to hold a duty of care to children and they have been found liable for breaching that duty of care. And we think that the Australian courts will um, make that same determination when they're called on to do so. Most major religious groups named by the Royal Commission have apologised and taken steps towards compensating victims of abuse. 
we're, we're not, not seeing, seeing any of that in terms, terms of responses from the Jehovah's Witnesses. Since the Royal Commission, ourselves we've resolved over 900 um, cases successfully um, and for around $150 million in compensation, not one of those cases has been resolved successfully against the Jehovah's Witness organisation. The organisation says there is no evidence that the Jehovah's Witnesses are guilty of institutional child sexual abuse and that it responds to compensation claims in a caring, fair and principled manner. But it long resisted joining a redress scheme designed to help victims, agreeing to sign up only after it was threatened with the loss of its charity status. There's a number of benefits that this organisation gets because it is a religious entity, a charitable institution, there's tax benefits. So one way that the government could ensure that um, this organisation was more child safe is to remove some of those um, benefits that it gets from their status, um, to remove those um, until they can prove that they are a child safe um, child safe organisation. The people who break away from the Jehovah's Witnesses pay a terrible price. They remain cut off from their families and closest friends, those they love the most. Within the ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, we do it once a year, is a Memorial Day. I did it a few times. You take a bunch of flowers and a cart to mourn the loss of your family and leave it on the door of a kingdom hall. It's like a death, and that's where I've come to terms with Mum died three weeks ago, and I just got a t I knew it was coming at some point, and I just got a text message from my brother say, "Oh, by the way, uh, Mum died yesterday uh, of stomach cancer. Doesn't want a funeral. Didn't want a fuss." And that's it, Jeff. Bill Hahn also grieves for his three oldest children who continue to shun him. So really for the last 10 years, from when the reality of it set in, that okay, they view me as dead, that you almost mourn in reverse. I've just had to grieve the fact that look, until they wake up themselves and leave, and come out of the religion, that basically I just have to view them as that they've passed away. Uh, which is not nice, but it's... Jehovah Witnesses, what can we learn from those stories? One of the lady whose life has been affected by child abuse and being shunned. And her life today is still affected. Her life is a mess. Most probably if she hadn't been a Jehovah Witness, it wouldn't have happened. And in this picture, the other member of the governing body looks happy in his suit with his wife. They're the ones that are responsible for the policies that affect the rest of other people. We want you to see the truth of how real individual Jehovah Witnesses that leave, how it affects their life. It's got nothing to do with Satan the devil. It's got nothing to do with sin. It's got of what is right and what is wrong. And this organisation, in two cases so far, we've seen child abuse, shunning, and then telling somebody when their mother's dead, they didn't want a funeral, and that was it, and a text message. And these are people who claim, your people who claim that you love Jesus. And now the governing body has said you can say hello and that's it. 
so they're treated as if they're dead. Being sexually abused, they're being shunned. What kind of people are we, are they? Brothers and sisters, you call them. But he looks happy. The new member of the governing body that's high up in the watchtower. His policies are the ones that affect people's lives. And sadly, it's not good. And you Jehovah Witnesses need to see the truth. The gimmick of these pictures of governing body members. The worship of people who worship the governing body. Whose lives affect every single person that comes out of this cult. And you by your brainwashing actions can be responsible for affecting people's lives. They need help. Was that the reason why those that shot themselves when they committed suicide? We're going to deal with one more story. Did you uh, fondle? Did, did you touch, touch each other in, um, in, the, in the genitals? genitals? Did, did, um, did, did he have an ejaculation? ejaculation? Um, did, did his, his ejaculation, ejaculation touch your skin? skin? Aged just 21, Renee was judged to be unrepentant and issued with a notification of disfellowshipping. She was cast out into a world she was completely unprepared for. Well, I had nobody to turn to, and then I'd lost my entire family and community, so it was like I landed in a different planet, and it was an extremely lonely period of time. It was unbelievable. Disfellowshipping is accompanied by total social exclusion, known as shunning. It's supposed to be loving discipline. Actually, to me, it's inhumane to the point of the complete shunning of not having anybody in your life, talking to anyone, everyone being completely removed from your life that you've ever known, especially when you've been born and raised in an organization and all of that is taken away. That is, that is inhumane. It is not loving. American Brandy Schmiedel, who lives in Colorado, is the niece of governing body member Stephen Lett. She shunned her brother Stephen Camp when he came out as gay. I knew his family meant the world to him. It was one of the most important things to Stephen. For him to be faced with this decision was probably one of the biggest things he was ever going to have to face. After five agonising years, Brandy privately resumed contact with her brother, but the rest of the family continued to shun him. In 2020, he committed suicide, leaving these instructions for his funeral. Things I don't want. The mention of religion or JWs talked about upon my passing. They were the source of where this all began. It was one of the most important things in his life was his family and his friends, and he lost both. Soon after Stephen's death, his uncle, Stephen Lett, gave this address about the impending apocalypse. There'll be many others who'll come back, 
who will have to abandon their former way of life. I was thinking, as an example, a homosexual. Now, this former homosexual comes back in the resurrection, and he really thought, and he was taught, and he came to believe that God accepted him with that lifestyle. But now he's going to learn about Jehovah's moral standards. It was extraordinarily insensitive, especially this is just a few months after my brother had died. It did give me the courage to speak out about this because this needs to end because it is hurting way too many people. I have had hundreds if not thousands of people reach out to me saying that they have experienced almost the exact same thing that Stephen has gone through, or they know someone that has, and the vast majority of them have either attempted, or they know that someone has um, killed themselves. The sad traits of coming out of the Jehovah Witnesses, not allowed to think, not allowed to disagree with the Watchtower, there are many lives, Jehovah's Witnesses, that have been screwed up by these men. These ones, including the new two. I think there's one other missing on there from the UK. Lying in court. Lying to get people in, to deceive them, but to completely screw their lives up. You've now seen true stories of how practices and beliefs and your behaviour, like was our behaviour when we were Jehovah Witnesses, when we were shunning people, when we were brainwashed as you are, for you to see the reality of how this affects people's lives and that this is a cult and this is not the way that you should treat people that have been affected by this organisation. Shunning is evil and is wrong and is not in the Bible. You may think it, you may believe it, but it's not. You need to open your eyes to see how this organisation has made the, the individuals of these people's lives that I could not even comprehend apart from going through my own experiences, nothing compared to some of that it's awful it's dreadful it's not evil it's people being messed around by elders and we've seen that with mental health and it still doesn't change within the organization it may do a magazine about mental health to make it look as if it's good it may do a watchtower on mental health, but his policies are the ones that are causing the problems. So I hope through these stories you will learn that you need to be more compassionate towards people that come out and you can see how it has affected people's lives. Nothing to do with sin to do with man-made doctrines governing people and affecting people's lives and they have been harmed by it emotionally, mentally, whatever you may think. God bless.